Hey there, Brady here with your daily tennis lesson. So it's angles week this week at DTL and today we're gonna look at the forehand angle. Four points we gotta touch on to get that forehand angle working really well for you guys. The first thing is stance, all right? I am a huge believer that even if you don't utilize open stance for all of your forehands, it's an absolute must for a forehand angle that you're hitting out of an open stance. The reason for that is that generally we're gonna try angles from more off the side of the court. I tell my players a lot, there's not a lot of angle to work with in the interior or the inside of the court. So we're working from the outside and we're working the ball completely across the other side of the court. So in a neutral stance, if I take that left foot forward to work a ball hard over to the left, neutral stance does not allow the hips and the shoulders to come open as easily or as fluidly as open stance. And I think as you guys know, to, to really make the ball kind of available to that really cross court side, we want to have that really athletic kind of rubber band like turn through the ball. So open stance is an absolute must. Next thing we look at is racket path. All right, a standard forehand, if you watch my forehand, I take that loop, I drop the racket just under the height of the ball, and I'm working through the ball. For an angle, we want the swing to get steeper. So it's imperative that in the drop from the loop, that you guys let that racket dip quite a bit lower. I like the look that the top of my racket is pretty much pointing towards the ground. We don't have to let it get down and touch the ground, obviously, but we don't want to be in that slot right at waist height because we won't create enough upswing on the ball. So I want that steep drop and then a really nice vertical path. It doesn't have to be a buggy whip. You can still get to more of that traditional finish position, but we want the racket really working from kind of the tops of the socks, really up the back of the tennis ball. So create more elevation in the swing, more drop, more height on the finish, okay? which brings us into contact point. You're gonna hear this a lot with angles from myself, from other coaches, from commentators on TV. A great angle is gonna get produced if the contact point occurs more on the outside of the ball. Mark, could I grab a ball real quick, please? Okay, what we mean by the outside of the ball is again, if this thing is staring me in the face, the letters, right? I wanna let the strings gravitate more to that right side of the lettering, okay? So we, we consider that the farther part of the ball away from where your body's positioned. So we want those strings working up the outside or the farther part of the ball. If we catch the back of the ball, or obviously the inside part of the ball, the closer side to your body, it's not gonna work the ball from right to left. It's gonna either push it outward or more from left to right. So let the strings really gravitate around the right side of the tennis ball for the forehand angle. All right, and then that brings us into the aggressiveness with this shot. I think a lot of people hit an angle and they think, well, it's this kind of delicate shot to a small target. So they kind of baby it. And we want the spin to drop the ball into that angle. And the more spin we get means racket speed, all right? So I need you guys creating a ton of acceleration up the back of the tennis ball. Don't go underneath it and just kind of loft it over. If you make it, it's still giving your opponent time to get to the ball. Hit it with a good amount of acceleration so once it drops into the court, it takes off on the bounce and releases out the side of the court essentially making it impossible for someone to run it down. Okay, position-wise, last thing to touch on, I don't love to see players hit angles from deep behind the baseline. So you're gonna notice I'm gonna position somewhere around the baseline, if not slightly inside. If the ball that comes into me pushes me back, angle is not the right shot for that scenario. All right, so let's look at all these. We're looking at open stance. We're looking at that racket path going lower to higher. We're looking at contact point getting around the ball more. And we're looking at a ton of racket speed. Let's see how, I, how well I execute these angles. Here we go. All 
right. One more. All right. So that one, you guys, the second bounce is outside the doubles alley. I think as I progressed there, I noticed the first couple, I didn't like where the second bounce was occurring. So the first thing that popped into my head was, hey, get a little more on the right side of the ball. So by that last angle, I let the strings reach around the ball a little more, creates a little sharper angle, and I get that release of the bounce. All right, so really important to be aware of the result of the shot. If you kind of like how it feels because the stance was open, the path of the racket was low to high, maybe not enough angle on it, you can kind of pick out which of those four points maybe wasn't working and just lock into that thought on the next swing rather than thinking about all four of them at once, which as we know, tends to be a little tricky having too many thoughts go on in your head, okay? So that's all I got today, forehand angle. Get out there, practice it. Look for more videos to come this week on different angles from around the court. But until then, please click like below this video. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so, as well as check down below me in the description of this video. You'll find the link to three free courses Mark and I have put together. I think you'll find those great as well. All right, so until next time, be well, and we'll see you soon at Daily Tennis Lesson.